everybody, welcome to your Teen Church message for today. Let us first get started with a prayer. Father God, Lord, I just thank you so much for this time and space we can come and just listen to your message today, Lord. Lord, I pray that you be with each and every single person watching this, Lord, that you just open up our hearts and our minds and our ears to listen to your message, Lord. Lord, and I pray that whatever's been occupying our mind space, Lord, and whatever's just been making us feel anxious or worry or, or, or fearing, Lord, that we'll just put that to the side and just... Just come to you today, Lord, and listen to what you have to say, Lord. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, have you ever been in a jail cell? Now, one time in high school, we went to go visit the Constitution Hill, and there, that's where the prisoners during apartheid were kept, or some of them. And we went to go visit both the men and the women's side. And while we were in the jail cell, we could just almost feel the oppression of what the people might have felt and how they must have felt so caged in. And because they were caged in and had their freedom taken away from them, that they sort of lost hope that they would be released or hope of a good life or anything hopeful that would come to them. Now, most of us probably can't relate to how they're feeling, as most of us probably haven't been in a jail cell. But... You know, we can also create jails in our minds or feel like we are stuck and cannot escape certain situations or how we are living or where we are in life. And we can also, because of that, we feel like we have no freedom. Now, this lack of feeling freedom can be the worst feeling as it can also take away our hope. So our Bible reading today comes from Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 21. And it says, Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me, to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your, heart, in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, as we read, our Bible reading comes just after Jesus had come out of the desert from being tempted by the devil. So you guys remember that? 40 days, the devil came to him three times, promised him all these things, and Jesus was like, mm, go away, mm, I know the truth, go away. So this happened just after that. So he goes from Galilee to Nazareth and preaches in their synagogues. And while preaching, he reads from a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. I think you can find it in chapter 61 of Isaiah. He says in verse 18 to 19, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He then announces that the scripture is fulfilled, which means that Jesus is the person who has fulfilled that scripture and the person who the prophet Isaiah was referring to is Jesus. See, Jesus is the one who was filled by the Spirit and who will be doing those things for other people. Now, if you've read the gospel, you know, the New Testament especially, you will see that Jesus goes and preaches to the poor. Jesus preaches about the forgiveness of sins to those who were stuck in their sins, who were held captive in their sins. Jesus heals people and among those people are the blind. And Jesus also releases people from their oppression. Jesus came to ultimately set people free from their sins, sins that were holding people hostage and captive. Now, let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. It says, Life through the Spirit, through the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. So through Jesus, there is now no condemnation for our sins. Because if we had to die for our sins, we would go straight to hell. But now because of Jesus, because we ask Jesus for forgiveness, 
then we are forgiven. Then now that, that means that we have no condemnation. So now there is no consequences for our sins if we have asked Jesus for, for, for forgiveness. Now, imagine that there is a person who is in prison for many, many years. Now, imagine the moment when the judge comes to that person and says that they are free to go. And if that was you, what would you do? Well, now imagine that you decide to just go ahead and stay in jail. Does that make sense? The doors of the jail cell are open. The locks are unlocked. You are not chained anymore, but you decide to sort of just stay in the jail. Now, that's the sad reality of how some Christians live. In, and when they continue to li live as if they are not free. So how do you think we live as prisoners? We might feel that we aren't good enough to do something or ach to achieve something. We might feel like our circumstances are holding us back or that our emotions and feelings are holding us captive. See, or that our sins are just keeping us from going forward in our journey with Jesus. That because we are still sinning that we cannot move on. See. The good news is that Jesus came to set us free, that you are free from whatever kind, and this means from whatever kinds of chains or bondage or, or sin or blindness or poverty that you might be experiencing. We are free. Jesus has set us free. And we must focus on the freedom that comes from Jesus. So ask yourselves these questions. Have I truly been set free from my sin in my life? Or am I continuing to do things that I know that God doesn't approve of? That is slavery. Slavery to sin. Do you let worry, fear, or anything else stop you from being free in Christ and his power? That is not freedom. As a Christian, it is like you are living in a prison cell that has been unlocked. So this is when we continue to commit the same sins. and We feel like we, that's just how our life is going to be. But listen again to the words from Romans 8, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no con condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. See, Jesus does not condemn you. He wants you to be free, free in every sense, free to proclaim his good news and freedom to those in the world who are still captive. He is calling to each of us to fight with him to free people from the chains of poverty and despair. So how we do that by freeing people from poverty and despair, that means that we go out and help people who need help, that we go and spread hope to people who feel hopeless. He is calling us to join, in, to join him in setting people free to truly live. But it has to begin with you being free if you are not free in Christ. Now let's ask that he would open your eyes and you would have the courage to accept the freedom that is yours. So let us pray. Jesus, thank you for setting me free. Free from sin, free from despair, Lord. Free from worry. Free from being held a prisoner of fear or worry or whatever it might be that is holding me hostage, Lord. Help us all to realize that we are free in you, Lord. Lord, that there is no condemnation in you, but that you love us. And that you want us to come to you to ask for forgiveness for our sins, Lord, no matter what sins we have done. Lord, I pray for each and every single person watching this, Lord. You know what's on their hearts. You know what's holding them back from living the life that you want them to live, Lord. Please be with us all this week. Protect us, guide us, guide us, and help us to study really hard in our exams, Lord. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Remember that you are free in Jesus Christ. Have an absolutely amazing week and see you guys next week. Bye.